Okay, so I've marked 1314 is spindle enable, L3, L4 is DC bus. We have two other contacts here. Depends if you get a five pole or a four pole contactor. You know, you may not need any more now. Um, or you want to shut down a, a flood coolant pump relay or so, uh, that sort of thing. So you can use this, this, this next terminal. Um, they use T1, L1 and T1 for that. Here's our, here's our flood. Output three is flood in here. And let's look at that. Let's just follow it on the print. Um, you know, let's say we're gonna use a relay And we're going to call this, uh, here's our contact. And, um, you know, we can use 24 volts. Let's call it 24 volt relay and the contact's rated at whatever the load is, you know, something that, that the all-in-one DC relay contacts can't handle. I believe these are 10 amp contacts, so you got 20 amp. Uh, you have 20 amps or something. So, uh, Anyway, so we're going to run, we'll just follow the print. Let's say we're going to use flood common. We're going to go to CNT1. So output three is going to CNT our contactor. So out. To there. And then the wiper would be 24 volts, which we can pick up from here. This is 24 volts. Here, and then this, we're gonna drop it down. Well, let's go the other way. We're gonna come around here. We're gonna go down to say, doesn't matter, L1, L2, whatever, the spare one. And then this one, to complete our circuit, we need to go down to common. So we go, go to our common. So you can see the circuit. So flood pump, everything is normal. The, the CNT1 is closed. Um, we've turned on flood. So we got 24 volts going up through the contact over to the coil and then it's coming through, going through the CNT1 and to ground. So if this closes and this is, this is closed, then this closes and this turns on whatever your load wants to be. You know, if it's your flood pump, you know, you can turn that on. If it's three phase and you gotta control a three phase relay, this can be a three phase relay. And so your flood pump is three phase. Here's your flood pump, three phase to it. But this is an example of using this one contact and going through the e-stop contactor to close a three-phase uh, a three-phase relay circuit, turn on flood pump or whatever it is, whatever whatever load you got. Okay, so a lot of flood pumps are you know 110 volt pumps are you know less than an amp. Well, that's easily controlled from the all-in-one DC. You know you can. As backup, you can go through this contact just like we did here, and instead of relay coil, well, this is the flood pump, okay? So you can turn that flood pump on and off. All right, and then you have another contact here to use it for whatever you want. If you need to open something else, you can open something else, or you don't want something else enabled unless, you know, the all-in-one DC is online, the e-stop button's closed, and you want this closed, then you can enable something. So. That's what the e-stop contactor does. So we've covered e-stop contactor, we've covered the variable frequency drive, we've given an example of a flood pump and using the flood circuit. Um, you know, we can talk about the mist circuit. Let's do that next. Okay, let's say you have a mist system. You wanna run a mist on your machine or, um, so, and the best way to do that, mist systems are usually pneumatic, they're air driven. So air goes through the cool mist system, blows the mist out on your part. You can do MQL, minimum quantity lubrication system. Same thing, they're all based on pneumatics. So let's put in a, an air solenoid. 
So we got, it's 24 volt. We're using 24 volt because we have it. So what, what are we gonna do? We have a missed circuit. So we're gonna come off our 24 volts, okay? We're gonna go up 24 volts to common, off our 24 volt circuit to our solenoid, off our solenoid to ground. So we have 24 volts DC going up through the mist circuit out to the positive side of the coil and on the negative of our pneumatic solenoid. up into here and then down. So you can see it. So if you command, a, 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 and I don't know off the top of my head what the G code is for mist, but if you command it and you command it on, that circuit closes and it closes the solenoid and you got air going out of your mist. It's, it's that simple. It's, there's nothing complex about it. So, you know, I think we've covered just about everything. The only thing left here is work light. Let's, uh, Let's talk about the work light and then we'll go into limit switches. All right, let's say you have a work light. It's a 110 volt work light. So pretty simple here. We're going to come off. Uh, let's go from the all one DC print. Work light is work light, 110 volt AC. Looks like TB13B. So TB1, remember this is AC here, so TB1, 3B. It's going up, over, over to our work light, common, out of our work light to here, here's our light. And then we've got to get down to AC minus. Uh, might as well bring it to the same side. AC minus, pretty simple. Control, uh, I'm assuming as soon as the control comes online, this closes, turns on your work light. I, I, I didn't go that route. Um, you know, basically I have it so that once it's powered up, my, I'm going through a fuse to a receptacle on the side of my mill, and then the receptacle back to ground. So as long as the power, the power switch is on, my work light's on, and I have a switch on the work light, turn it off. The reason why I say that, I mean, I, it's a waste of an output, and, and, in my opinion, I mean, it isn't, it isn't. I mean, if you don't need the output, by all means, use it for the work light. It's programmed that way. Um, but uh, if you need the output, well, then a work light, you can plug it into the back of the mill or whatever, and it can, you can flip it on and off as you need to. So uh, that's, that's it for the work light. And the last thing I believe that we need to talk, talk about or touch on is our limit switches, which is one of the really easy things to wire up. Okay, here are our limit switches. I've already got them drawn on here. Limit switches should be most certainly normally closed. I drew a box around it saying these are limit switches, they're on your machine somewhere, okay? I'll zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So, Basically, remember, we got 24 volts going into the commons of the four of H, H11 and H10. So 24 volts goes in, and then it's coming out, going to your limit switches. These are pre-programmed. Input 1 is X negative. Input 2 is X positive. Input 3 is Y negative. Input 4 is Y positive. In 5 is Z negative. Input 6 is Z positive, okay? So what do we need to do? It's simple. The other end goes goes to the grounds, all right? Um, and for whatever reason, it kind of inverts. But let's say it doesn't matter a whole lot, but as long as it hits the negative, the DC negative. But if you follow the print, you land it on the terminals it calls for, you know, it tells you on the print, where, where the, the commons land. If you do that, if you have to troubleshoot something, you can refer to the print and say, my X, my Z negative is on TB1, TB1 14. I took it to 15. These are all off a little bit. Let me fix them. Make a mess here, but they go to 14. And then Y goes to 
Oh, my eraser's no, it's probably my grubby hands. And then this goes up like this. So they go to f my Z commons go to 14, my Y commons go to 13, and my X commons go to 12. It's that simple. So you can see the circuit. When these are normally closed, and it's important, the reason why they want your limit switches to be normally closed, if a wire breaks, then the, the control sees it as a fault and stops. Says you got a, a negative, you got a limit switch tripped. If you use normally open, then if a wire breaks, it's still open. And when the machine hits that limit, it will not function. Okay, it won't close. So you want to use normally closed limit switches. I think that about covers all the subsystems in the all-in-one DC. I think we've covered everything pretty well. We've talked about the coolant pump. We've talked about wiring the spindle. I mean, servo motors is basically, you know, you've got, you've got X is X, Y, Z, X is one, two, three. Encoders get plugged into the encoder port. That's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, and these are marked positive, negative. You wire them that way. We've, oh, uh, setting current limiting. Um, there is a, there are a set of dip switches on the all-in-one DC. You need to know what the maximum stall current is on your servo mode. I think we've covered all the subsystems according to the manual. Yeah, we have. So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope it clarifies things a little bit. I was going to try and do this as I wired my my uh, control cabinet, and I found it was nearly impossible to do. And I think doing it this way, you know, lends itself to all all-in-one DC installations. You know, it, it, it kind of gives you an overview of the subsystems and how they interact with each other, how they interact with the all-in-one DC. So I hope that that helps you out and uh, helps clarify things. Again. This is my interpretation of the, of the prints as I see it. Your machine and your installation may vary somewhat, but yeah, I don't think you can go wrong if you follow the uh, all-in-one all DC installation instruction. And also remember that uh, Centroid has a user forum group on their site. Um, I, they, they, do monitor, they do monitor CNC zone. Uh, right now it's called the Ajax Forum. Um, I think eventually it's going to change here pretty soon. Um, it'll be a centroid forum, but you know, hit CNC zone or hit um, probably preferably um, their their user forums. That way, all the users can help each other out. Oh, one last thing: the print, the, the schematics show what wire gauge is recommended. Um, I suggest that you follow it and you follow the color code. Um, because it'll be easier for you to troubleshoot your machine down the road. Keep notes. I usually take a steno pad and I kind of scribble notes on it as to how I'm hooking something up if it deviates from the print. And then I go back and I can red light on my print. So make sure you keep good records because eventually you may have to work on that control. And if you don't remember how you put it together and you don't have any documentation, it's going to be a real pain. All right, with that, signing off. Talk to you soon.